Hello, I'm Will, this is Mike, we're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And if you've been following along with our series of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest, you'll know that at this point in the magazine we've got the entire contents of the Dark Imperium starter set now, with models for which you can see on screen. So in this video we're going to be taking those models and just playing a fairly standard game of Warhammer 40,000 with them, a kind of, just a kind of pick-up game, the sort that you might play with a friend or down your local gaming club. Now, sort of two main things we want to explore with this video, if you like. The first of those is sort of the starter set and the stuff you get with it, and the fact that you've got these things now if you've been getting the magazine, and how these armies do, and what sort of stuff you get with them. But the second thing, as you'll see on the screen as well, we've got the new Space Marine Codex that at the time of filming came out about four months ago. And we've said before that the magazine itself has not told us anything about this or the new rules you get in it. So we are actually going to use those rules, or at least some of them, and um, we'll see how it affects the Space Marines and their performance and what they can achieve. So we will use things like new stratagems, because the magazine has shown us how they work, but we won't use things like relics, because that's part of armor creation. We technically don't know about that yet from the magazine at the time of recording. And uh, we're going to just be using the uh, the open play simple mission from the rulebook as well, because uh, again, this is from the perspective of it's part of your graduation, I suppose, into sort of full 40k from the magazine, I guess you could call it that. Yeah. So we'll be just trying out that as though you were kind of Conquest Magazine was the intro your introduction to this hobby and you know, where you might go from there. Yeah, so obviously you can see the armies on screen, but we're going to have a look at more detail of them now, then have a look at the board and get straight to the game. So here are our Space Marines, and uh, as we, we've said as we're going along with the magazine, which stuff is from Dark Imperium, but uh, we've got the Captain and Gravis armour, the two Primaris Lieutenants, and the Primaris Ancient, two squads of five Intercessors, a squad of three Inceptors, and a squad of three Hellblasters. And now, as I said, we'll be using the new Codex rules for them, and uh, the things to note for that is that the guys in Gravis armour, that's the Inceptors and the Captain, will have an extra wound, so the Inceptors are all three wounds each. Uh, the Lieutenant with the Auto Bolt Rifle, now has three shots rather than two. There's a couple of army-wide rules that help them out as well. There's going to be uh, Bolter Discipline, which makes rapid-fire weapons better. Tactical Doctrines, which I won't explain now, we'll see it as it happens. And Shock Assault, which basically gives them an extra attack if they charge, or are charged, or perform a heroic intervention. So hopefully all of that stuff will address some of the complaints we've had in the magazine, basically, about the Space Marines. Yeah, so the Gravis Captain will be my Warlord. Uh, I'm going to give him the Champion of Humanity trait. Uh, in the new Codex, uh, in addition to giving him plus one to hit and wound against characters, it also gives him plus one attack if there is a character within an, an inch of him. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm also just going to use the Ultramarines chapter tactic, rather than coming up with ones for the a successor tactic for the Silver Templars. Yes, because there's also a system where you can make your own chapter tactics effectively, effectively, but we won't use that for this because if you're if you're just coming into this fresh from the magazine, it's another complicated thing to add in, so we'll just stick with what we know from the magazine for the moment. Likewise, we won't be giving any, any of the characters any relics, because the magazine hasn't told us how to use relics. So. And here are the Death Guard models. So we've got the Lord of Contagion at the front, the Malignant Plaguecaster, the Noxus Blightbringer. Seven Plague Marines, uh, this is the champion with the Power Fist and Plague Sword, and Plasma Gunner only, uh, any, yeah, and then everybody else has bolt guns. And 20 Poxwalkers, and the Fetid Blood Dragon. And my Warlord obviously will be the Lord of Contagion. He will have the Living Plague Warlord trait. Probably not the best one, I mean, but I don't know, I feel like using that one today, so we're going to go with that one. And the Plague Caster for his Psychic Powers, he will have Miasma and Pestilence, obviously. And we're going to go for uh, Putrescent Vitality as well on him. Actually, with the advent of the new Codex Space means the Death Guard also get access to some of these rules, so they get the Boulder Discipline rule, although it's called something else, but I can't remember what it is. And the it's called Hateful Assault for the Death Guard, so they also get bonuses, bonus attacks when charging and so forth. But again, you'll see that as we get into the game. But we felt like it's important to add, if we're going to add the stuff from the new codex space means it makes sense to update the Death Guard one, even though they haven't got a new codex, but they did have some additions. So in issue 64 of the magazine, it actually tells us how many battle mats to use depend if you're making up your own battles, and well, roughly speaking, and it recommends about three if you have a certain number of units. So we've gone with all three, and you can see we've set the terrain up using the instructions for the magazine, actually. Then the mission we're playing is called Only War, and this is from the main rulebook, and uh, it's a basic scenario that you can use if you just want to throw some models on the table and get playing. So we've each placed two objective markers, so we've got one down here, over there, one here in the city board bit, and then there's one here by these pipes and the hemodrake reactor. And just a quick note about terrain, what we're going to say is that, like, for example, this bit here that's bordered by a couple of uh, riser pattern ruins will be area terrain. Yeah, so be, this will be the edge of it. Yeah. And then this whole sort of dark bit. Yeah. And the same on this side as well, this is the edge. And the same down here with this one over here as well. And then for the other terrain, we'll be following the rules as given in the magazine, because again, if, you, if you're just playing this straight from the magazine, you won't know any difference. So the ammo boxes will give free rolls of one to hit and so forth, and there's various bits of dangerous terrain. 
things that can only give cover to vehicles, we'll see that if it comes up. Then in, in this mission, what the objectives are actually worth is determined by rolling uh, D3. Um, but to do before we do that, we have to roll to decide who rolls the D3. It, that's what it says. So I've rolled a 1. Oh, 2. Okay, so you get to roll a D3 and that determines what the objective is. Mm -hmm. 3. So that victory condition is called domination. At the start of each turn, not battle round, but each player turn, it says, each objective marker is worth one victory point to the player who controls it, and we need to keep a running score of that. Then that means I'm the one who gets to divide the table in half, to, and then I'll, I'll just divide it straight down the down the long distance in the middle, because it's easiest, and then you get to pick your deployment zone. Yeah, I guess I'll pick this side because it's the side I'm on. Yeah, makes sense. And you've picked your deployment zone, so I get to deploy a unit first, and we'll just show you the finished deployment. But basically, you have to deploy more than 12 inches from the enemy deployment zone, so that's going to be 24 inch gap in the middle. So we finished deploying, I deployed a unit first, and we went back and forth, but we've just done it, and we'll show you. So the space marine deployment over here. So we've got a unit of intercessors on this flank to go for the Reliquary. We've got uh, the unit of Hellblasters, and then all the characters behind. Uh, the two lieutenants are just deploying next to each other, so they can spread apart. And then the other unit of intercessors on the, my left flank, and the interceptors are in reserve. And over on my, my side we've got the 20 Poxwalkers here, going for that objective with the Noxus Pipe Bringer, the Malignant Plague Caster, the 30 Blood Drone, and over on this side is the 7 Plague Marines, and then the Lord of Contagion is in the Teleport Area. It says for this scenario that the player with the lowest power rating chooses who to go first, but the magazine hasn't told us what power is yet, so well, we're just going to roll off instead. Um, so I rolled a 5. And a 6. So would you like to go first or yes, something? Yes, I would go, yeah, to go, go first. No, we didn't mention before, but we have three command points each. Partly because that's what the magazine usually says, but actually, if you did add up all of these units, they would come to two patrol detachments each. So if this were, if we were doing detachments and stuff that the magazine hasn't told us about yet, then that would actually be three each anyway. But with all of that, we will be on to Space Marines turn one. So this is the result after the first Space Marine movement phase. We should also mention the tactical doctrines. The Devastator doctrine is active at the moment, which means all heavy and grenade weapons have an extra minus one AP. It uh, doesn't affect you at the moment because you don't have any heavy weapons and all your grenades are out of range. But at the start of the next battle round you can change it to a different one. And in my movement, uh, basically everyone just moved up so these guys are going to take go into this bit of area terrain as we say it ends here. Uh, take that objective, this left hand is going to go with them uh, and everyone else is just going to go in that direction. But also to take this objective and I'm not going to bring in the Inceptors on this turn. Okay, so that means we're going to the shooting phase. So to start off shooting, the Hellblaster squad is going to fire into the Plague Marine squad. And we will overcharge Hellblaster point number one. I have to do these all individually because it might blow up. Hellblaster number one hitting on three drawing ones. Gets a hit. Number two. Oh, we roll that one. Oh, it misses. That's one hit so far. Two hits. Three hits. And Sarge. Oh. Four hits. Wounding on threes because strength hit versus toughness five. Uh, re rolling ones because of the left hand. Ooh. Good thing we can reroll ones. Two wounds. Um, but I don't get an armor save because uh, not in cover at the moment. So two disgusting units only at two at a time. So that's a dead plague marine. And that's a dead plague marine. Now we'll just take these two bolt runners from over here. Next, this intercessor squad next to the hell blasters will also shoot the plague marines. Five shots, city on threes, you're rolling ones. It's four hits. Wound you on fives, you're rolling ones. That's two wounds. These are AP minus one at the moment, so four plus. Make my fair one. Disgustingly resilient. Yep. Let me take away this bolt down this time. Next, I'll do this squad of intercessors. They're going to shoot at the pox walkers. Right. So again, we've got five shots. Uh, re rolling ones because we're next to an ammo crate. Three hits. Wounding on three is rolling ones because the lieutenant. Yeah. One wound. Well, uh, disgusting you did it. No, I made that. So no pox walkers are injured. Next, I'll do the Ancient, he'll shoot at the same, the Plague Marine squad again. One shot hitting on three, rolling ones, he hit, wounding on five. Yep. I'll do the Lieutenant that's there as well, who'll also shoot at the Plague Marines. Three shots hitting on threes, rolling ones, he will hit. Yep, three shots because the Autobot Ralph has three in the new codex. Yep, wounding on five, rolling ones because of himself. One wound. This is no AP, so it is just a. Oh, I failed that save. Is it? Yes, it's two damage as well, so two disgusting units, it? Yep, that's another one dead. So we're down another bolt gun. Yeah. And that'll be it for shooting. Uh, obviously there won't be any charges. There will be a morale test, however, for the Plague Marines, because they lost four. So with the leadership eight, that means... A five or a six is bad. So you don't want a five or a six. That's a six. Dang it. I'm going to have to use a command point to re-roll that, because I can't really afford to lose two more Plague Marines. Uh, three, so they're fine. But it did cost me a command point. 
And at the end of the turn, objectives are scored. Because it, it does say at the end of the turn, not battle round. Um, and Space Marines hold two, so that'll be two victory points for them, and obviously zero for the Death Guard. So that's two points for the Space Marines so far, as we go into Death Guard turn one. In my movement phase, the Plague Marines have moved up into this area terrain here. And then all of these units are going to advance. We'll start with the Bloat Drone, and thanks to the Noxious Blight Bringer, we can roll 2d6. And pick the best. Uh, two, alright. That extra two inches is just enough to get it within nine inch uh, shooty range of the Hell Blasters. Next, we will, next we'll do the Pox Walkers actually, because otherwise they get in the way. So 2d6 picking the highest. <sighs> Snake Eyes, okay. Wow. I'm going to have to spend a command point to re-roll this because it won't get, that's not enough to get me within range of the objective. So I'll re-roll one of these dice. Okay. So that brings them up like this. And yeah, as I said, not within three inches of that objective, because three ones. And I'll roll for both these characters as well, so we'll do the Blight. So we'll do the Blight Runner himself. He goes five. Extra five on the... Um, Playcaster gets an extra six. So that gets the Blightbringer to here, so he's still within seven inches of all these units, and the Playcaster has come down here, which makes him he's just about within 18 inches and closer to the Hellblasters than anything else. And then I have brought down the Lord of Contagion over here, and he is nine inches away from the Hellblasters as well. So with that, we'll be on to the Psychic phase. We'll start by trying to cast Miasma of Pestilence on the Bloat Drone, needing a six, getting it with, a, with an eight. And then we'll try and do a smite, which we hit the Hellblasters if it goes off. And five. That's a seven. D3 mortal wounds to the Hellblasters. It's three. So the Hellblaster died. So on a four plus, he gets to have a go. He gets to shoot. Yes. So that's where he was. So I think the Gloat Drone is going to be the closest target. So he can't shoot at the Lord of Contagion. So he will shoot at the Gloat Drone. He'll overcharge because he's, he's dead. Yeah, he might as well. So he's got two shots, hitting on fours because of Miasma Pestilence, but re-rolling ones because of the captain. It's two hits. Yeah. Wounding on three threes, re-rolling ones. Re-rolling the one. Two wounds. Five plus invulnerable save. Ah. Oh. On to the shooting phase then, and the bloat drone will shoot at the Hellblasters as well, so... It will have 2d6 automatic hits. For five. Wounding on threes, re-rolling ones. That's two ones. Four, four wounds in total. Four three plus saves, because we're in area cover. Even though it's AP minus one. Oh, maybe more. That's just the plague range left. They will shoot at the Hellblasters as well. We won't overcharge the plasma gun, but it will have two shots because of an extra blue advance. So, yeah, two shots hitting on threes. One hit. Wounding on a three, because I didn't overcharge, it did wound. Yeah. Five plus armor save, because we're in cover. Nope. Well, this Hellblast will die, but on a 4+, plus, he gets to shoot. Yep. So this Hellblaster is actually closest to uh, the Lord of Contagion, so I'll shoot at him. Two shots, hitting on threes, rolling ones. Yeah, you are supercharging. I am supercharging, yeah. so, or he died again, but... Yeah, you... Wounded on threes, rolling ones. Oh, come on. Try harder. No. No. So now he dies, and then we've got two shots with a bolt gun as well. Uh, the champ this champion has a bolt pistol, so he's not in range. So two shots. One of the two. Nothing. And then in the charge phase, the Lord of Contagion will declare a charge on the Hellblasters uh, and your captain as well, just in case you feel like heroically intervening. So yeah, the Hellblasters will overwatch and they will overcharge. Yeah. So Hellblaster number one gets one hit. Hellblaster number two misses. Sarge gets a hit. Oh, wow. Two hits. Wounding on threes, you're on ones. Yeah. One wound. Four plus and one will save. No, he's alright. And then your pistol is in range from your captain. Yeah. Three shots. No. Re rolling ones. Rolling ones. Yeah. Nope. Still not. Then I need to roll a nine inch charge. Seven. No, I'm not going to re roll the three because I'd need to get five plus and uh, Hell Blasters don't have to take a morale test, but we do need to score objectives. Uh, Death Guard, we're going to get one over here because the Box Walkers failed to advance more than one inch. Um, and Space Marines get another two. And yes, again, it says at the end of the turn, so. <laughs> So there we are, that's four victory points to the Space Marines and one to the Death Guard as we go into Space Marines turn two. So the first thing I'm going to do on my turn is change my combat doctrine to tactical doctrine. So this makes it so that all my rapid fire and assault weapons are AV-1. Yeah. Yep, so not much movement. These intercessors are going to hold position. The defense is going to move up behind them. Hellblasters are going to shuffle along a bit so that they can get closest to that Lord of Contagion. The Slough is going to move along and the intercessors here are going to hold position as well. So at the end of my movement phase, I'm going to bring the Inceptors down here. So it's on to your shooting phase. So I'll start with the Hellblasters. Uh, they're going to shoot at the Lord of Contagion. Overcharging again. Hellblast number one gets a hit. Hellblast number two gets two hits. Sarge gets two hits. 
Five hits. So we need threes rolling ones. Four wounds. Four plus and vulnerable saves. Make two fail two, so that's four damage total. Five plus disgusting using it. Made one, so he takes three wounds. It's down to three. This intercessor squad will fire at the Plague Marines. And uh, we stood still, so we can rapid fire up to our max range. So yeah, that's, that's how Volt Discipline works, is if they don't move, they can f fire up to the max distance with rapid fire weapons. Cool. Yeah, with Bolt weapons that are rapid fire. So not the Hellblasters, unfortunately. But we've got ten shots sitting on threes or on ones. We roll on that one. That's eight hits. Wounding on fives, you roll on ones. That's two wounds at AP minus two. Yes, because the tactical doctrine is active. But you got cover. I've got cover, but that's still not enough because it would be four pluses, so that made a difference. It's got something resilient. Oh, there's another two. Uh, I think we'll keep the plasma gun because the champion has actually not got much range firepower. So next, the ancient will fire at the plague marines. We've got two shots hitting on three zero ones. One hit, wounding on five zero ones. That was a wound. Uh, AP minus two again, so four plus. Yes. Next, the Inceptors will shoot at the Lord of Contagion. Yeah, and he's closest to them, so... We've got 18 shots hitting on threes, rolling ones. Then re-rolling ones. Two more hits. 12 hits. Uh, wounding on fours, re-rolling ones. Mm. That Six many... Six wounds. Four pluses, because Tactical Doctrine affects assault weapons, so these are minus two. He's failed three. So I have to make all of my disgusting resilient. I've made one, so <laughs> sorry. I have to. I had to make one. So yeah, he's down to one wound. Uh, this captain will fire his pistol at the Lord of Contagion. Yeah. Three shots hitting on twos, rolling ones. It will hit. Wounding on five, two rolling ones. One wound. Fortunately, this is a pistol weapon, so I get my full two plus save against it. Yes. Then the lieutenant will fire his auto bolt auto bolt rifle at uh, Lord of Contagion as well. I was trying to finish him off. Yeah. Three shots hitting on threes, rolling ones. Two hits. Wound you on fives, you're on ones. Mm. Well, that's wound. And this is assault weapon, so. Three plus. Three plus. Nope. And two, two damage. damage. You need to make both. He's dead. Lord of Contagion goes down. So this squad of intercessors is also going to shoot at the Plague Marines. Yep. So they are just within 30, so. But we get uh, to rapid fire because we didn't move, so we've got 10 shots. Hitting on threes, you're on ones. Because of the ammo boxes? Yeah, because ammo boxes. Six hits. Wounding on fives, you're on ones, because lieutenant. And only one wound. It's enough though, because this is AP minus two. I'm in cover, so it'll be a four plus. Nope, that's a three. Makes a difference again. Oh, he's alive. And finally, this lieutenant is within pistol range of the bloke drone, so he might as well shoot at it. One shot hitting on a four, we're rolling ones. He hit. Wounding on a five, you're rolling ones. No. That'll be it for shooting. I assume we don't want to declare any charges. No. Nope. In the mouth race, these Plague Marines lost two, and the guy who's left is only leadership seven, so on a six, he'll run away. No. Oh, five. And then we score objectives again, so you get two and I get one again. So that puts space between six points to two as we go into Death Guard, turn two. Then my movement face, the Plague Marine here has just moved up to the window over there, and the Blow Drone has come over here. Uh, it didn't advance, although it's not going to make a great of a difference. All my other units will advance, so we'll start with the Plague Caster. He gets to go an extra four, so that brings him to there, like that. Then we'll do the Pox Walkers. They could charge, but it'd be really long, so I think I'm going to advance them instead. On two deals, because the Blightbringer, they get to get an extra four as well. So that brings the Pox Walkers out to there, and the uh, Blightbringer has just moved round this pipe, and he's within pistol range of the Incessors, and he hasn't advanced. So with that, we'll be on to the Psychic Phase. We'll start with my Asmode Pestilence, so I'm going to put it on the Bloat Drone again. So, on a six, that's an eight. And then he'll try and do smite, and the Hellblasters are closer, or at least they're equidistant, I get to choose. That's a nine. Oh, it's almost an eleven for the big smite. Mm. So, D3 damage, mortal wounds, that's two. So, kill so the Hellblaster. Hellblaster will go down. I'll kill this one in front. Okay. But on a four plus, he gets to act. He does not. He goes down. Black. Rather annoyingly, that was the only model that the bloat train was in range of with its guns, which I totally didn't think of when I moved it like that. The Plague Marine will shoot the Hellblasters as well though, he's going to supercharge, because I kind of need to at this point, and I've got a command point, so... Two shots, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones... Oh, sorry, no, not re-rolling ones, but that's a two, but it's not, he doesn't die, it's fine. Uh, wounding on a two, yes. Five plus armor save. There's cover. Nope. So two damage. 
So Hellblast will die on a four plus, he gets to shoot. He does. So he'll shoot back at the, the blade green that killed him. I suppose he might as well. He's within rapid fire. He'll, he'll overcharge as well. As well. Uh, hitting on threes, rolling ones. Two hits. Wounding on threes, rolling ones. Two wounds. And no armor save. No, because um, you're minus five at the moment, yeah. thanks to the Tactical Doctrine, so... so four damage. Yeah, well, I don't know what he's only got one wound. Yeah, he's dead. This Hell Blaster dies. And my Blade Green's also dead. And uh, that means I'm not within range of the objective either. And the only other shooting we have is the Blightbringer. He's going to shoot his plasma gun at those intercessors. Plasma gun, plasma pistol, rather. He will not overcharge, because he might kill himself. He would have killed himself. Yeah, that's... Well, actually, I think in my charge phase, the Bloat Drone is going to charge the intercessors, because I kind of need... Something, I need to do something here. Yeah, yeah, so we'll have watch with our bolt rifles. Ten shots, hitting on sixes, you're rolling ones. That's two hits. And wounding on fives, you're rolling ones. There's a wound, it's at minus two. So five plus, nope. And disgustingly resilient, nope. So it takes a wound, it's down to nine. And it has to roll a nine. Nope, that's a six. And I'm not going to re-roll that because I need a six. Then we have to score objectives again. The box walkers have come to get this one, but the space marines still hold two, and the plague marine died, so there's only one guy. There's nobody on that one. And it'll be eight points to three in favour of the space marines. But we'll get into space marines turn three. Yeah, my turn. The only movement is going to be the inceptors. They're going to move across to get into range of the box walkers. Yeah, it's worth pointing out as well. You could have changed to the assault doctrine at the beginning of the turn, but you don't want to do that. It makes pistols and melee weapons yeah, better. Yeah, they're not in melee yet, so no. So, but we're on to the shooting phase. <laughs> Actually, I'll start with the inceptors. Yeah. They're going to shoot at the Poxwalkers. 18 shots, hitting on threes, rolling ones, because Captain. We're rolling the ones. Yeah. Wounding on threes, you're rolling ones. That's 10 wounds. AP doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. They just get to die on not rolling on the things that aren't fives. Oh, that's eight. Ugh. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to take from the back. So, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should have, I'm going to play the rapid fire stratagem on this squad of intercessors. I meant to do it at the start of the phase, but. Well, it's fine, doesn't it? It's not going yeah, to make any difference. William's really. not bothered because it's not going to make too much difference. I was sort of shot the interceptors first anyway, in case they killed enough to take them out of range. But basically, this just makes the, all their bolt rifles rapid fire two instead of rapid fire one. So it costs two command points, but. Uh, so down to one. With rapid fire two, we've got 20 shots. 20 shots hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. So I, one says so 17 hits. Wounded on threes, you're rolling ones because of the lieutenant. Move all those wounds away. That'll be 15 wounds. Uh, one fell out. I think there's one left. That's one, made two, four. So 11 dead, so yeah, yeah, one left. One. So that leaves one lonely box walker here. I'm still within range of objective though. So in my next shooting, the ancient is going to shoot at the lone box walker. Yeah, you can see him and he's just in range. Two shots hitting on threes, you're on ones. Oh, yeah. he's loaded with blanks. Mm. Oh, one hit. Wounded on a three, you're on ones. Wounded. Does five? Yes, it does. Oh. <laughs> okay. So these intercessors will shoot next. Uh, these four will shoot at the blow drone, because it's the only thing in range they can actually shoot. This one at the end is in range of that poxwalker, so he'll shoot at that. So the shooting at the poxwalker is two shots hitting on threes, you're on ones. Two hits. Wounded on threes, you're on ones. Two wounds. Yeah, there oh. it goes. Shooting at the blow drone, hitting eight shots, hitting on fours, you're on ones. Oh, my asthma's doing some work. Yeah, two hits, winning on fives, you're on ones. Oh, one wound. And AP minus two because tactical doctrine active. I made the safe thing. And the Hellblaster sergeant will shoot at the blow drone, he's not going to overcharge. No, because you'll be blowing up on ones and twos if you do yeah. that. Two shots, hitting on fours, you're on ones. That was a hit, good job I didn't overcharge, you would have blown up. Winning on a three, we're rolling ones. No. Nope. Uh, the lieutenant will shoot at the blow drone as well. Three shots hitting on three. Fours, you're rolling ones. Two hits. Fives, you're rolling ones. One wound. Five. No, four, four plus. No, three plus. No, four plus. Four plus. Same four plus. Well, made a five. Yes, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> Fire his pistol at the blow drone. May as well. Uh, hitting on threes. Busy ballistics kill two, but they all hit. Only on fives. One. It's a pistol, so no AP, so we made the save. Yep. Yeah. But that'll be the end of my turn. Yep. Yeah. Um, at which point I'll just concede the game, I think, because I've got nobody on objectives, you're going to get another two, so I'll put you up to ten to three. I have no way I can pull it back, because I can't even get anyone to this objective over here. And you've got far superior firepower, so even with the boat drone, it will definitely be a Space Marine victory. And, um, well, we'll, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about all that for you now. 
So that was our game of Dark Imperium stuff with the things that actually came with Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. Um, well, there's plenty to talk about, but let's talk about the game, I guess. First uh, yeah, all. I think the scenario quite heavily favoured my army. Well, and the first person who went first as well, yeah. for that matter. Just for the fact that it's yeah. scoring at the end of every turn rather than battle rounds a bit weird. Yeah. So it might be worth actually saying straight away, we picked that scenario simply because in the core rulebook it is the kind of introductory scenario, the you want to play a game, put your models on the table and roll yeah, some and dice and here you go, <laughs> this is how you do it. Yeah. And the objective was chosen randomly and that's what we got. So. Yeah, and we're, we're coming at this from the sort of perspective that since this is beyond conquest that you would buy the full rulebook because that contains lots of extra scenarios and match play and narrative play, but an uh, open play would be possibly the first place you look. And of course we got the new codexes and stuff to try and test out the new rules. Yeah. And also it would be interesting to see how Dark Imperium, the Dark Imperium armies match up against each other with the new rule changes to the Space Marines. Yeah, because as, as I said earlier, um, issue 64 does talk about using the battle maps and how many to use for your own games, and that sounds to us very much like what yeah. Games Workshop tend to call open play, which is pretty much, oh, you know, you've got a friend round and you want to just put some models on the table and have a game. And that's also basically what the Dark Imperium starter set is. It's two armies that you can put on a table and play a game. In fact, I think probably the very first game we ever played of 8th edition was we put the yeah. models from Dark Imperium on the table and played that mission yeah, that we probably, just played. Probably was. Or near enough, um, something similar. And yes, with issue 63, we had all that stuff from Conquest. So, yeah, thought- so the Dark Imperium box is about £80. With all the magazines spread across eight issues, you get the same models for about it be £64. So if you wanted just the models, it is cheaper than buying the box, but you do miss out on the rule book. Yeah, because the rule book is quite expensive by itself. The full, f- full fat, yeah, the hardback. Yeah. But it does include all the extra yeah. scenarios and stuff. Which is all stuff yeah. that's being introduced steadily in the magazine. And I think and issue, issue 65 coming up is probably include making armies using the power values they've given us. So yeah, actually that's another thing to talk about is the power value of these armies with the new Space Marine Codex is roughly the same. It's 41 for the Death Guard and 43 for the Space yeah. Marines. Whereas when the, when the box set first came out, it was 50 for the Space Marines. Oh, well, again, it's 41 for the Death Guard again because that hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. We could have done this by just using the models from Dark Imperial and the rules from the magazine in which case we would have effectively been playing the starter set as it came out the beginning yeah. of 8th edition and we have done that before I seem to remember the Death Guard can actually hold their own despite being yeah if you get the Lord of Contagion into melee and I think also yeah. just the fact that the Plague Marine army from Dark Imperium really doesn't have very much firepower at all and it's funny that isn't it because we've, we've become accustomed to the Death Guard firepower being really quite scary yeah, even against two wound Primaris Marines Blight Launchers the Blight Launchers go straight through Primaris Marines and also yes I made some mistakes like that bloat drone not being in range but the Space Marines have got a ton of new rules and their power has gone down yeah, so although the power is now balanced yeah the spa- these Space Marines are much better I mean because so if you've been watching our magazine series you know that we stuck to the magazine rules of we've been using the old Space Marine Codex but I was really genuinely surprised just how much difference Bolter Drill and Tactical Doctrines made yeah because being able to rapid fire out to 30 inches effectively doubled the power, firepower of intercessors yeah, and the extra point of armor piercing as well against Plague Marines that, yeah, that, that cut them down. Those Plague Marines just got completely annihilated. And, I mean, even if I had gone second, I think, because you might have actually been in... I might have been able to get you in rapid-fire range anyway. Yeah. And again, as, as we said at the beginning, the player with the less power should have had the choice to go first. But, as we said, if you're coming up at this from purely from Warhammer 40,000 Conquest point of view, you don't know what power really means at this yeah. point, because it doesn't tell you. I think you, you might have mentioned yeah. it very early on when it explained data sheets. But it didn't explain how to yeah. add them up, as it were. I mean, I know it's not hard. But I mean, and that's also yeah. why we didn't choose any relics as well. We're coming at it this from basically the perspective that you've literally just gone out and bought the codexes and the rule book, and you've had a quick flick through, and you're just playing a game straight away coming off the magazine. So yes, I guess according to the letter of the scenario, I should have gone first, and I probably shouldn't have made mistakes. But you know what? I reckon it wouldn't have made it that much difference because you could still stand still and put out a huge amount yeah. of firepower. And yeah, and with that strategy, I'm getting 20 shots out of five intercessors. Yeah. We included those because if you bought the codex, you'd know, and you'd been playing the magazine, you would know what a stratagem is. So yeah. you probably figure out that you can just use these. And also it's useful to see because a lot of the stratagems in the original Space Marine Codex are really pretty garbage. Yeah, and there's in the new codex, there's a lot of them that actually apply to, in, to Primaris things only as well. Probably to encourage people to take and, intercessors uh, and Yeah, there's, them there's at least four stratagems that apply solely to intercessors. Mm. I guess in that respect, using the Codex was our way of trying out something we've been, let's say, mildly yeah, annoyed yeah, that they, they haven't introduced any of these new rules in the magazine, even though it's now about three months, maybe even four months after the, yeah. this book came I out. Think, I don't know. I think that is actually a problem with the magazine. Is it kind of might give you the wrong impression of the Space Marines as not being that good an army. No. 
I mean, I assume they balance the scenarios in the magazine still around the old codex because the new rules would probably make the Space Marines too good. Like in the the video that came out before this one, if I was able to rapid fire at Poxwalkers just from the start of the game, right. well, I would have killed a lot more Poxwalkers, I imagine. Yeah, it would have. Your firepower in that one was not very good, but you only that's because you're getting five shots. Mm. So. And it does seem like um, they're still going to be using the old rules. So I think we have had comments from people from someone from Spain. They've been using the old rules. Um, presumably, the French issues are going to use them as well. So yeah. If you're getting them in those languages, then hopefully you won't. But it's possible that in a, in a year's time or so, when you're getting towards the end of your subscription, you're still going to be using Space Marine rules that are like over 12 months out of date. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine that at least with the English version, they work a few months in advance, so maybe they're just that's just the way it is. But as I say, yeah, with the French version, for example, if they don't fix it by then, then that would be pretty poor. We'll see. It's still a while way in the future mm. for that. I mean, it is fixed by using the codex. But if you're if you're a new player, oh, I'll take my space from an army from the Congress magazine and take it to a club, and then people will be like, "You're using completely the wrong rules, mate." Well, at least all your stats and things will be wrong. Yeah, exactly. I suppose it's just speaking about the models in the starter set itself. There are a few in the start in in Dark Imperium that you can only get from Dark Imperium, or indeed if you happen to have got one Forty Thousand Conquest magazine. Yeah, there's the two Lieutenant models: the Primaris Ancient, Malignant Plague Caster, and the Noxious Blindbringer. The only way to get those models is from the starter set or the magazine. And the Grabber's Captain and this Lord of Contagion you can only get in from the magazine, Dark Imperium, or uh, No No Fear, the slightly smaller starter set. Yeah. Anyway, so that, I think that's all we have to say for this discussion. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing. Um, I don't know, let us know if you've tried out stuff like this before or if you uh, have anything, any opinions on the Dark Imperium starter set itself. Uh, but we've been the Tabletop Donkeys and we'll see you next time. Yep, bye for now.